In this video, I tried beating Terraria using flamethrowers only, but as many of you know, there are only two flamethrowers in the game, the flamethrower and the elf melter. However, both of those can only be obtained in hard mode, so I installed one of the craziest flamethrower mod that adds in a whole bunch, for both pre-hard mode and hard mode. Not only that, there are also new armor and accessories, so the question is, how good are these flamethrowers, and will they be strong enough to take down the final boss Moonlord? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, let's go gather the materials to craft the first flamethrower, which is going to be either the Golden Fury or the Platinum Fury, depending on which ore this world has. Also, just to mention that I'll be collecting each and every flamethrower this mod has, but for now, let's gather some wood and then try to find a cave. All right, that's enough wood for now. I've collected 277 and there is a cave over here. So let's go explore it. Oh, there's a gold chest and a slime statue. What? Wait, how lucky did I just get? This was literally the first cave that I found too. Okay, there's the band of regeneration. And luckily, I am able to trigger the slime statue with this pressure plate. So I'll leave this here for now, and when I do get my hands on the first flamethrower, then I'll start farming these slimes for gel. And it looks like there is platinum in this world, so I will be crafting the platinum fury. There's also a couple of life crystals down here. So after these two, I'll have 140 health. Never mind, there's actually one more life crystal down here. So now I'll have 160 health. It's a pretty decent start so far. Another gold chest. Hermes boots, and it has armored on it. There's the suspicious looking eye. And that should be enough platinum ore. I've mined 100. Let's just collect this life crystal and then head back home. Let's first build a house to store all my stuff away. Alright, inventory is cleaned out a bit. Now it's time to craft the Platinum Fury. Are you kidding me? That was 24 bars of Platinum and I ended up getting awkward on it. Hopefully the speed and knockback won't affect it too badly, but let's go and test it out. I only have 3 gel, so I'm gonna see if that's enough to kill at least one slime. Let's summon out the slimes with the slime statue. Alright, moment of truth. 3, 2, 1. Oh, that should be plenty. Beautiful. One more time. Wait. I ended up using three gel already from one click. What? Oh, come on. I guess I'm going to have to resort to collecting some lava with a bucket to kill them off. Bucket made. And let's also craft the tungsten pickaxe. Okay, that should do the trick. There we go. And now I basically have infinite ammo. So I ended up checking this mod out more in depth. And it turns out that I'm able to craft the endless gel pouch with 999 gel. So I'm going to keep using the lava to kill the slimes until I gather enough. Okay, I think that's enough jumping. My hands are so tired. So... There we go, yeah, 1047 gel, but I also see something new, and it is the golden gel. Interesting. Oh, the golden gel is just basically ammo. Okay, then I would assume that this would deal more damage compared to just regular gel. But anyways, now I can craft the endless gel pouch. Perfect. Oh yeah. The flames are looking nice. And I won't ever have to come back down here. The next flamethrower that I'll be crafting is going to be the Skyburner. So it is nighttime at the moment. I'm going to take this time to collect as many fallen stars as possible. And then I'll head up to the skies to kill some harpies for their feathers. This flamethrower is a bit weak, but it sure is satisfying. And there we go. That's 20 fallen stars. It's time to start killing some harpies. 
One more feather to go. There we go. That's enough. Let's craft the sky burner. Oh, there we go. That's a much better modifier. Plus 13% speed and 10% velocity. Let's see what it looks like. Three, two, one. Oh my god. This has a much wider range of attack compared to the Platinum Fury. Look at that. That's insane. Not only that, it rains feathers down too. Let's test it out on this blue slime. Here we go. Oh my god. It has 10 range damage, 8% critical strike chance, and yeah, shoots feathers from the sky. It's about time I take on the first boss, which is going to be the Eye of Cthulhu. So let's wait until nighttime to summon it. It is finally nighttime. Let's go ahead and summon the boss. Three, two, one. Where is it coming from? The right side. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to be real with you guys. The damage is still a bit on the lower side. So yeah, it's going to take some time to kill this boss. Second phase, here we go. Less than 500 health now. Come on. There we go. The first boss has been defeated. I guess that wasn't too bad. I honestly thought it was going to take a lot longer, but I remember that once I have Cthulhu reaches second phase, then I'll be able to deal more damage. Let's build some NPC houses, and then let's start mining down to hell. While I mine down, I'll be searching for some life crystals and accessories. That is 300 health. Just need 5 more life crystals until max health. And this is the last life crystal for max health. I ended up gathering a whole bunch of tungsten, so I'll be crafting the full tungsten armor. Lovely jubbly, 25 defense. And I'm also going to craft the sapphire hook. I should be good to take on my second boss now. And that's going to be the brain of Cthulhu. So let's make my way over to the crimson. Let's build an arena first. A three layered arena should be good enough. And now let's break some crimson hearts. Last one, here we go. Run, run, run. Oh, come on, get up. There we go. And it begins. Oh my god, the creepers are... They're getting decimated. Wait, they're all dead already. Oh my god. They just all bunched up together. And then they couldn't move. This flamethrower is insane. Oh my god. It just covers the entire boss. And oh god. It's getting a bit hard to uh, differentiate which one's real. But I should be good. If I just do this, then I'm, I'm perfectly fine. But let's not do that. Because that will just take way more time. 100 more health. And the Brain of Cthulhu has been defeated. Ooh, and the Goblin Army is approaching. I guess I'll take care of them before I do anything else. Okay, Goblin Army has been defeated. Now I can start searching underground for the Goblin Tinkerer. Before I do that though, I am going to craft the Deathbringer pickaxe. And with it, I'll be mining some Hellstone to craft the Molten Maelstrom. Oh, I see the Goblin Tinkerer. Hello. I almost missed him because it was so dark. Let's buy Rocket Boots and the Workshop. And now let's start mining some Hellstone. All right, that's enough Hellstone. 358. Now I can craft the Molten Maelstrom. Got Agile on it. Not bad. 
I'm going to craft the Molten Pickaxe. And my very first accessory for Flamethrowers, the Blazing Flower. Increases Flamethrower damage by 8% and Velocity by 8%. Let's combine the Rocket Boots and Hermes Boots to make Spectre Boots. And then it is time to take on Skeletron. But real quick, let's see how this Flamethrower looks like. 3, 2, 1. Oh! Okay, so at the very end, it explodes into fragments. 19 range damage, 7% critical strike chance. Inflicts enemies with fire. Oh yeah, and it does deal damage. Oh, this is... This is nice! Let's quickly build an arena. All done. And let's talk to the old man to summon the boss. Here we go! Jesus, look at all those fireballs! Okay, one hand down already. That was super quick. And that's two, just a head now. All done. Let's go grab myself the Cobalt Shield. And I'm also going to be farming the Skeletons for their bones. To craft the Necro Armor Set. And then turn that into the Shadow Flame Armor Set. There it is. Oh, what is that? Superior water thrower? Oh, the water blasts can go through water. Okay, let's test this bad boy out. Three, two, one. Oh. Uh, this doesn't seem very good, to be honest. Yeah, let's go back to my, uh, Molten Maelstrom. Alright, that's enough bones. Let's craft the Necro Armor. Oh, I'm such an idiot. It requires the Mithril Anvil. So this armor set can only be obtained in hard mode. Oh my god. I mean, I didn't waste my time. I still do need it for later on. Matter of fact, I'm going to use it right now because it does increase range damage. Oh, and the set bonus gives 10% increased ranged critical strike chance. So before, I had 19 range damage, and then 22. I'm all set to take on the Wall of Flesh, so let's head down to Hell to summon the boss. Okay, made it to the end of the world. Let's toss in the Voodoo Doll to summon the Wall of Flesh. 3, 2, 1. Here we go. Hungries should be no problem. Let's try to angle it so I can hit all three parts at the same time. Oh yeah, burn it up. Two thousand more health left. Yep, no problem. All done. Let's open up the treasure bag and see what I can get. Nothing useful at all except the Pone Hammer and Demon Heart. Let's go back to the Crimson to break some Crimson Altars to spawn in the hard mode ores. So we've got Cobalt, or Calcum, and Titanium. That's enough Cobalt. Next up, Ore Calcum. That's enough Ore Calcum. And finally, let's go mine the Titanium. And that's enough Titanium. Firstly, let's upgrade the Necro Armor into the Shadow Flame Armor. Oh yeah. There doesn't seem to be a set bonus though, which is a bit of a downer. And with the Titanium Bars, let's use it to craft the Titanium. Yeah, let's use Titanium to craft Titanium. And I realized I mined a bit too much. 
There's really nothing else I can craft using these bars, so I might as well keep on crafting the titanium to get a better modifier. Ooh, there we go. Deadly. One more time. Okay. Let's test this weapon out. Three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Wait, this flamethrower has such a long range of attack, it literally reaches the ends of my screen. Let's go up into the skies to kill some wyverns for their souls of flight to craft myself a pair of wings. Oh my god, that wyvern got shredded. Wait, I just realized. This weapon is going to be insane against the destroyer. Oh my god, okay. Oh, another one. What's going on? Okay, that is plenty of souls of flight. And that's enough souls of night. Now I can craft demon wings. I'm all set to take on the mechanical bosses now, so let's wait until nighttime. Okay, it is 7 p.m., which officially marks nighttime. The first mechanical boss that I'll be summoning is, of course, the destroyer. Three, two, one. Go, go, go. Okay, here we go. Oh my god. Wait, my damage is insane. Oh, I'm so glad the flamethrower can penetrate through the entire body. Okay, let's not get cocky though. Things could end up really badly really quickly. Okay. That was so quick. Next up, the twins. Target this bad phantasm first. Okay, second phase. That's one down. Here we go. Second phase for the retinator now. And there we go. Twins have been defeated. Now before I take on Skeletron Prime, I'll be using the hollowed bars with the Souls of Sight to craft the Brothers. It has 84 range damage, and if my guess is right, then this flamethrower is going to shoot out the Cursed Flames as well as the lasers. Let's test it out. Here we go, last boss. Three, two, one. Oh my god. Yup. Exactly how I envisioned it. The lasers are not accurate though, they're just like going everywhere. Okay, one hand down. Two hands down. And all done. Yeah, for sure this is a lot stronger than the titanium. Too bad this weapon doesn't inflict the cursed flame debuff though. Alright, let's craft the pickaxe axe. And then let's head to the jungle to try to find the plantera bulb. As well as mine the chlorophyte ores to craft the Venomous Sprayer. Oh, there's the Plantera Bulb. Let's start making the arena right here then. All right, the arena has been made. Let's break the Plantera Bulb to summon the boss. Three, two, one. Here we go. It's gonna fly in circles for the first phase. Second phase is coming up pretty fast. Here we go. Shouldn't be a problem though. And just like that, Plantera has been defeated. 
This thing is actually really strong. Wow. And the temple is right here, so let's enter it to take on Golem. This is a decently sized arena. Okay, finish building the arena. Just a single layered platform is good enough. Let's begin. Okay, both fists are down. Head is down, just the body now. All done. Now, the only thing that I'm really looking for inside this treasure bag is the Eye of the Golem. Because once I have that, I can craft the Temple's Rage. Let's pray that I get it. Not this time, but that's okay. Got three more tries. There we go. I used up all of my power cells for that. And now I can craft the Temple's Rage. 104 range damage. Three, two, one. Okay. That is beefy. Alright, let's head back to the jungle because I still need to craft the Venomous Sprayer. I was a little sidetracked. Alright, that's enough Chlorophyte Ore. Let's buy the Illegal Gun Parts. And finally, I can now craft the Venomous Sprayer. 91 range damage, homes onto enemies, and also inflicts enemies with poison. Oh, that is pretty. Let's test it out on the Eye of Cthulhu. So if I shoot up straight, it should home in. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, not bad. Now let's craft another accessory. This is called the Oil Can. So I need 25 Iron Bars, 12 Solar Tablet Fragments, and 8 Souls of Night. It inflicts enemies with oiled and fire, and increases flamethrower damage by 12%. And this accessory is going to replace my blazing flower. Honestly, I feel like all flamethrowers should inflict the fire debuff. Let's head back towards the dungeon now to take on the lunatic cultist. Here we are. Let's begin. So far, so good. Let's see if the Venomous Sprayer is any better. Less than 10,000 health. There we go! Lunatic Cultus has been defeated. It's now time to take down the Celestial Pillars. I'll be going straight for the Vortex Pillar first, because once I get some Vortex Fragments, I'll be able to craft the Plasma Surge. Okay, Vortex Pillar has been destroyed. Give me those Fragments. It's time to craft the Plasma Surge. Let's reforge this first. Deadly. That is so expensive to reforge. 32 gold. Is it possible to get Unreal on this? I'm just gonna go for it. Come on. If I get a Deadly again, then I'm sticking with that. Oh god, my gold. Okay, there we go. No more, no more. <laughs> It now has 158 range damage, 9% critical strike chance, shoots through walls, and periodically shoots lightning that will deal double damage. Here's what it looks like. 
Okay. Blue flames. Nebula pillar has been destroyed. Two more to go. There goes the Stardust Pillar. One more left. Before I destroy the last pillar, I'm going to go down the dungeon and farm some Bone Lees for their Tabbies and Black Belts. Then I'll combine those with the Climbing Claws and Shoe Spikes to craft the Master Ninja Gear. There's the Tabby. And there's the Black Belt. Master Ninja Gear has been made. And I'm going to replace the Shield of Cthulhu with it. Now let's go destroy the last pillar. Alright, there goes the last pillar. Let's get ready for Moon Lord. There we go. Middle eye first. Teleport. Looks like I'm dealing about 3,000 damage per second, which is pretty good, actually. Oh, my God, that was close. down. Forehead, eyes down. Alright, just the core now. That was more health. And Moon Lord has been defeated. Now having some Luminite Bars, I'm going to combine it with the Vortex Fragments to make the Infernal Gaze. Ooh, and we got Superior on it. 205 range damage, 10% critical strike chance, shoots through walls, and has massive spread. 3, 2, 1. Oh! Wait. This is like buttery smooth. Oh my god, this is like eye candy to me. The video isn't over just yet. I'll be getting my hands on the rest of the flamethrowers that I haven't gotten. So let's start off with the Shadow Vaporizer. In order to get this, I'm gonna have to summon the Goblin Army, so let's go farm some Tattered Cloths. Oh, and here's a Meteor. I didn't realize that one fell already. Okay, that's enough Tattered Cloths. And with the Goblin Battle Standard, I can now summon the Army. So to make the Shadow Vaporizer, I'm going to need 38 Crimtain Bars and a Shadow Flame Hex Doll. There it is. First try. Here we go. Let's see what this weapon looks like. Oh, that purple. It's not bad. Okay, taking care of the Goblin Army. On to my next Flamethrower. 
I did mine out the meteor from before, so I can quickly make the blazing meteor. I just need 14 bars. There we go. All right. Whoa. Wait, it's green? Okay, I was not expecting that. And I don't think this one has any special effects. Okay, no, I was wrong. It does inflict the on-fire debuff. But that's about it. Next up, the Necrotic Blaster. I'm going to need 30 spooky wood and one dark shard. So let's start up the Pumpkin Moon. All right, I got plenty of spooky wood. Let's go get the dark shard. There it is. All right, let's see. Oh, that is evil. A blackish purple flame. Is there any effects with this? No. It just has a massive spread. Not gonna lie, this is a bit lackluster. It looks cool though. Next in line is the Shroom Blaster. So I'm gonna need to make the Onyx Blaster and craft 34 Shroomite Bars. Let's purchase the Shotgun and then I'm gonna have to farm two more Dark Shards. That's one. And that's three, okay. Onyx Blaster made. And now let's make a suitable house for the Truffle to spawn. All right, it is all done. Now let's just wait until the background changes to the underground mushroom biome. All right, it is finally done. Oh my God, finally. This truffle took forever to come. But now that he's finally here, let's buy the auto hammer. And now I can convert my Corphite bars into Shroomite bars. There we go. Now I can craft the Shroom Blaster. So this flamethrower has 73 range damage, but that's because of its awful modifier. And it summons a Mushroom on hit. Let's test it out on the zombie. Three, two, one. Oh. Yeah, I saw the mushroom over there. And I think that mushroom does deal damage. Let's test it against the Eye of Cthulhu. Here we go. Uh, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not good either. I personally don't think it was worth the time used to craft this weapon. Next up is Betsy's Breath. So let's take on the Old One's army. Here comes Betsy. Almost done. Alright. Let's see if the flamethrower is in this treasure bag. Oh yeah, there it is. Surely there has to be something insane about this weapon. Moment of truth. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. The spread on this flamethrower is definitely way bigger than the Infernal Gaze. It also inflicts enemies with fire. But for a weapon like this, that's pretty much a given. There are just two more flamethrowers to obtain. And those two are the Inferno Spitter and the Life Light. The Inferno Spitter is dropped from the Wall of Flesh, and the Life Light is dropped by the Empress of Light. It's not the right time to collect the Prismatic Lacewing, so I'll be getting the Inferno Spitter first. Jesus! This spread is big enough Two, it just hits all three parts of the wall of flesh without me even having to angle myself properly. There we go. Got the Inferno Spitter. Here's what it looks like. Ooh, pure red flames and it shoots out lasers. 
Honestly, if I were to have gotten this weapon when I first defeated the Wall of Flesh, I definitely wouldn't have farmed all those titanium to craft the titanium flamethrower. Oh, and I just realized, Betsy's breath is able to pass through blocks. Oh, there's the prismatic lace wing. Let's go ahead and summon the Empress of Light. Here we go. Fifty percent health. Second phase. Oh god. I'm a little out of practice with this boss. Five thousand more health. Alright, we're good. Now, will I get the flamethrower? Yes, I will. 110 range damage, 17% critical strike chance. Using this weapon during daytime increases the damage by 20%, and at nighttime it decreases by 20%. That would make a lot of sense. Alright, here we go. Let's see what this thing is made of. Ooh, it's rainbow! Oh, that is so nice. This one can't pass through blocks, unfortunately. And it doesn't seem like it has any other special effects other than the damage increase. It doesn't burn or anything like that. Alright, that's going to be it guys. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below if you have any other mod or video ideas you want me to try out, and of course subscribe to the channel. I'll also leave all the mods I've used in the description below if you guys want to try this out for yourselves. That's it for me, I'll see y'all next time. Peace!